This meeting is being recorded. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone. Um, please keep in mind, everyone will remain muted during today's class. That just allows us to go through and make sure we get through all of the content. Um, if you have questions, though, as we're going through, please drop those in the chat. Um, I'll kind of stop periodically to check the chat and see if there's any uh, questions. And also, we'll have some time at the end to cover any additional questions that maybe we didn't get answered. Um, we are recording today's class. It will be added to our YouTube channel. Generally, within 24 hours, we get those uploaded. You can access all of our past classes, tip videos, etc. Um, right there on our channel. So make sure you check that out and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those. Um, but yeah, today we're going to jump into designs. So let's just take a look. The first thing you're going to want to do for today's class is you're going to want to go to command. So to access command, you're going to go to agent.kw.com. And I'm just going ahead and type in that in the chat box um, in case you need that. In order to log into command, you're going to use your KW username and password. Um, with those, keep in mind the username is not case sensitive, um, but the password is. So um, make sure there's no added spaces, capitalizations where they're needed, um, all of that fun stuff. Um, before we jump in, I always recommend before you do anything with designs or the marketing, go into your marketing profile and just make sure you have everything plugged in. Um, some of those things, uh, depending what kind of design you're doing, will pull information from your marketing profile. Um, I don't think too many of the things we're going to take a look at today pull from that, but it's always just a safe bet to check there first. So to access your marketing profile, you're going to click on your name in the top right corner. And you're going to go ahead and uh, head over to settings. Now, the marketing profile is different from the my profile. OK, so the my profile is mostly an internal profile, whereas the marketing profile feeds a lot of information to your app, your website and other marketing materials that you use through command. So to access that marketing profile, you're going to come over here to the connect settings and we're going to take a look at marketing profile. So in order for your information from your marketing profile to brand over to some of your external um, platforms, such as your website app, things like that, you do want to have this button turned on. You also want to make sure you have your information plugged in. It will actually not let you turn that on if you're missing the vital information that has a red asterisk. So just keep that in mind. Um, but you do want to make sure you have your headshot. Uh, your team logo. If you're not on a team, we still recommend having a photo here, whether it's a generic KW logo or um, your market center logo. It does pull automatically to some pieces of marketing. So that's why we um, encourage you to put something here. If you don't, it may appear broken in certain pieces of marketing. Um, your name and other information plugged in, your bio, phone numbers, uh, market center information as well as their logo and we'll take a look at where you can find those logos because we will utilize those today. Um, if you have compliance that you need to make sure is added, um, you will want to get those added here, whether it is text, links, or images. Um, we do recommend checking with your local market center to make sure you are in compliance. Um, and then you can link your social media and Google Analytics down here. Just make sure once you've updated anything within your marketing profile, you are hitting the save button at the bottom just to make sure those saves, uh, those changes are saved to your profile. Once we have everything good to go there, we are going to go ahead and jump into designs. So today we're gonna to take a look at a couple of designs. We're going to take a look at creating an email signature um, and how to plug that into your actual email. Um, we're also gonna take a look at creating a social post. Um, we may do like a holiday one today. Um, and then if we have time, we may check out the video um, and how to create that for social posts as well. Um, but we'll just kind of play that one by ear. So the first thing that I wanna show you guys is how to access your market center specific logos because we are going to be using those. 
Um, so to access those, you're actually going to go over to kwconnect.com. And you'll log in. Um, generally, if you're already logged into command, it will pull those logins over. But if for any reason you do need to sign in, it's going to be the same KW username and password as command. Uh, but once you're logged in, you're going to go ahead and hover over resources. And from there, we're going to head down to marketing. And once we're in marketing, you'll see that the first thing at the top uh, top corner is logos and branding. So that is what we want to take a look at today. Now, once you're here, you'll go ahead and scroll down. Um, you'll notice that it has a search option here where you can type in your market center number or name. Um, so for this one, we're just going to uh, put in a random market center. I'm going to do 22 and just pick one of these. Let's go ahead and do Let's just do Jersey Shore South. So what we're going to do is you'll see that it has a preview and a download option. So when we hit preview, you'll notice that it gives me a preview of that logo so that I can make sure that is the correct uh, logo that I'm looking for. Um, and from there, I can go ahead and hit the download feature next to that. Now, when I download, it's going to give me a folder on my computer. I go ahead and hit the extract button. And those go to my desktop. Oh gosh. One second, guys. There we go. All right. So now I have downloaded those. Now you'll notice that um now that I've downloaded those, I have a few different folders. The primary two that we're going to take a look at is the black and white and the CMYK. So when we open those up, there's going to be a few different uh, images here. If you change the view of those, you can kind of see what they look like. We're going to go back to large. Well, let's say extra large. Um, you'll notice that these logos are different variations of the same logo. Um, so they're going to be different formats. They're also going to be different colors. You'll notice this one's gray and black, whereas this one's all white, and this one is gray and white. You'll also notice that these three are transparent backgrounds, meaning if I were to put those on top of an image, it would not uh, have this white square behind it, whereas this one here if I were to use that, it would keep that white square behind it. Um, so I would have that there. Um, but those are those uh, black and white uh, different images. And then if we go back to the folder and we check out the CMYK and we change that view again, you'll notice that we have now the, the different red versions. So there's only two. There's the gray one, all gray with red, and there's the all white with red. And then you have the one with the background. Now, the reason for this being, let's say that you're using a very dark image. Um, this may be a little bit hard to read. Um, whereas if you're using a dark background, you would be able to read the white one perfectly. So it's just good to have those different options um, so that you can use the one that fits best for whatever you're creating at the time. Um, so that is how you find your Market Center logos and access them. Again, you can search by the number or the name of your market center, whichever one you know. If you're also needing a just standard KW logo, you can check out those down below um, and you can download those to utilize as well. Um, now, the reason that we go through that is like I said, we are gonna use those logos when we are creating a design. Um, and you can actually add them to your assets in command so that they pull up every time you're creating a design and you don't have to keep downloading them. So I'll show you real quick how to add those to your assets just in case. So for that, I just simply should go back and tell you guys what I'm doing as I do it. I'm just simply cl clicking the import design option up top. And once I'm there, I'm kind of brought into my projects, but you'll also notice that I have an assets option up here in the top. And we're going to go ahead and check that out. So now that we're in the assets, you'll notice that there are different options. You have the Keller Williams Realty and you also have my assets. So the Keller Williams Realty assets are going to be provided by Keller Williams International. 
um, their colors, their fonts. Um, if you click images, it's going to provide you with an abundance of stock images that you can utilize for various different projects. Um, you can also check out the folders. They're going to have different types of photos based on what you're looking for. So if we click the holiday one, once it loads, it's going to have some cute holiday um, images for us to use for different things. So you could create something with those. Um, again, that's just checking out those folders. You could just search for something um, by using the search option. Um, next is text. So for this one, it's just their uh, disclaimer. So the owner statement, each office is independently owned and operated. Um, so that kind of allow you to pull that in. Then if you click logos, uh, once it loads, it's going to have their various logos. So if you click events, um, there's red day logos. If you're ever doing something for that, there are luxury logos for luxury agents. There are miscellaneous ones for Equal Housing Opportunity, National Association of Realtors. There's the Labs logos. And then of course you can access all of those Keller Williams logos as well. There are some different ones on KW Connect. So that's why I like to point those out too. Um, next is Elements. So this is kind of like shapes or icons that you use a lot. So um, as you can see, they have some for email, website, phone, things like that for you to utilize if there are any videos, and then files. So they have some different files in here that you could pull in easily to different designs. If they load, if not, we'll just keep going because we don't really need those. Yep, let's keep going. So my assets, those are the ones that I have put in there that I will be utilizing. Um, now there already will be some most likely when you jump in there for the Keller Williams ones, but you can add your own. Uh, if you have custom team colors or branding colors for yourself, you can add that palette here. Um, images, this is a great place to put your photos, headshots, things like that. You don't have to put your logos here. Mine are just in there. Text, this is going to be like your license information, website, things like that, that you can easily just pull into your design without having to type it all out. Again, logos, this is where you'll want to upload your office logos so that you can easily pull those in uh, to your designs. So for us to do that, um, I'm gonna just upload, I'm gonna select my device and I'm gonna find those various logos and add them. Now I have four, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the add more so that I can grab the other variations as well. So I'm just clicking and highlighting those and then hitting enter on my keyboard. Um, now you're gonna notice that I have seven files. I'm gonna go ahead and hit upload and it's gonna add those logos to my assets. Now I can create folders for them if I want to. So um, Jersey Shore, so. It's gonna put a folder up here and then I can move those. Um, and I'm just clicking uh, shift on my keyboard and then clicking on those. I can move those by dragging and dropping into that folder. But I have them, if I have different logos, team logos or something like that, I can kind of separate them. Or if you're one of the agents that's in multiple offices, um, that's a great way for you to have all of them without them being right there. Um, Elements, again, if you have any elements for yourself that you would like to add, uh, videos and PDF files um, that you would like to add to your assets. All right, um, just check in the chat real quick. Yes, all of our classes are recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel generally within 24 hours. Um, I will go ahead and drop this link in the chat so that you guys have it. Oops. All right, so moving right along, I'm gonna go back all the way to command so we can kind of start back um, from designs. So now that we're in designs, again, um, please keep in mind yours may look different. Every person's uh, designs here look different. Um, these are designs that you've already created within your command account. 
um, for you to easily access and edit those. Um, if you want to continue to use the same design, it's a great way to not have to start all over from scratch. Um, for today's class, though, we're going to go ahead and hit this create design option. Um, and we're going to start by creating an email signature. Now, this can be a little bit confusing. Um, in order to create an email signature, we're not going to look under email. These are going to be email templates for you to send emails out, not email designs for signatures. Um, so for that, we're just going to go ahead and hit social and we're going to hit next. And it's just going a little bit slow today. Um, that's not what I was supposed to do. I'm wondering if they're working on some updates, maybe. Let's try that again. There we go. Maybe. Okay. Uh, sorry about that, guys. You never know what commands. Some days it's uh, getting updates and doesn't want to work. Um, now that we are in our social templates, you're going to notice that there are various different templates we can choose from. Now, I didn't have to go all the way back to create design from assets. I could have just clicked templates, but I like to kind of give a starting place. So um, now that we're in the templates for social, um, what we're going to look for is we're going to look for business basics for this specific class. So business basics is going to give you a few things that you can choose from. So if you wanted to create your own business cards, email signatures, letterheads, things like that, this is a great place to come. Um, we're going to take a look at the email signatures. Oh, gosh. Maybe. There we go. Um, so as you can see, there are two different email signatures to choose from. Um, it's your preference here, which one you prefer, which one you like the most. Um, but once you decide on one of them, you're going to go ahead and hit that use button uh, in the top right corner. And it's going to go ahead and open that into the designer so that we can make some edits to it. And I always say to wait till it loads because as you can see, this bar is going at the top. If you try to start clicking things before it's fully loaded, um, we tend to see some errors. So just hang tight for a second. Usually it doesn't take too long. Um, Question. Oops. Question. Uh, if you could drop questions in the chat, I'm gonna keep everyone muted for the class, um, but go ahead and drop those in the chat and I will check it out. Um, now that we have our email signature selected and pulled up, we can go ahead and start customizing it for ourselves. So there's a few different options when you come in here um, to edit text. You can double click on the text and highlight um, and start editing that. Or there is another option. You can click on the text and then up in the top, you're gonna notice that there is a typewriter option. Uh, the typewriter option, if you click that, it will pull up a box over here in order for you to start typing your information. Um, once you've edited that and you like it, you can go ahead and hit save. Um, you don't have to keep the colors or the font. Those are things that you can customize for you. Um, again, this is your email signature. It's going to go into your email. Um, so make it how you want it. Um, I like to check out some different fonts sometimes. Get it a little pretty, make it bigger, and then you can adjust it how you want. Um, again, you can also change the color. If you don't like the colors here, you get to move that around. So we'll go with a green just to play around with it. Um, once I have it how I like it though, I can go ahead and move on to the next thing. Um, what's great about these text box for a phone number, this is where it comes in handy if you have those assets typed in. Um, as for, uh, for text, you can pull in that information without having to type it. Um, I'm not gonna do that today. I'm just gonna go ahead and type it, but just know that uh, that is there. So I can pull in that information 
and just swap it out. So it just changed the number. It changed more than, so it's going to literally replace it with what is there. So if you don't want it to do that, I would just recommend typing over it or pulling up that typewriter. Um, for the logo, when you're using the logo, uh, it will pull those up. You can also uh, just replace it if you want to. So if I don't want to put it exactly where that one is, I can simply click on the logo over here. So we'll do this one. As you can see, it's going to put a new one on the screen. Um, I'm going to delete that and show you guys how you can replace that logo exactly where it was. So if I want to swap it with this one, I can click this replace logo. It's a double arrow and it's going to put that exactly where that other logo was. So super easy to just get it done and keep it the exact si same size. You don't have to worry about readjusting it or anything like that. Um, you can upload your own signature um, from Canva. You probably don't need to put it into command to do that. You could just upload it to your email, um, but up to you. Um, these are just the ones that command provides for you guys to use and edit. Um, let's see. Okay, um, same for license. You can use the text to replace that information. Um, with the assets, I don't have my license. I don't have a license, so I don't have one plugged in here. So I could just put in, we'll pretend that was my license. Um, go ahead and plug that in. It just, like I said, makes it a little bit quicker for you. So you don't have to sit and type everything out. For your photo, um, you can pull that in from your image assets. Um, and you can do the same thing with this. You can do the replace and it will put it in that exact same square. Um, once you have it in there, if it's cutting off your head or something like that and you need to readjust it, you can, you can pull it down. Or if you just don't like the size of that, um, when you crop it, you do have to hit the done option. Um, but let's say that I just wanna make that box bigger. I can do that as well. Or I could drag it down so that it's the full size of my photo. Nothing's being cropped out. Um, again, these are up to you. It's your email signature to customize how you like and how you see fit. Um, just make sure you are in compliance with your local uh, rules. Uh, but once I have that there, I'm all set. Um, I can then download it and add it to my email. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, to download, we're going to go ahead and hit this button up here. Um, it's got a arrow pointing down with a little box behind it. I'm gonna change it to a, you could do PNG or JPEG. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do PNG and I'm gonna download. Now, once I have that downloaded, I can go ahead and add it to my email. Um, I have my Gmail already logged in. In order to access that and get that plugged in, I can click the settings button and then see all settings. Um, now, if you want this to work from your phone as well as from a computer, um, we do recommend adding it to a platform like the imgur.com. This will allow it to pull up both on your phone, should allow it to both pull up on your phone and through your computer. Um, you don't have to have an account to utilize this platform. Um, so you can upload it into there and go ahead and try that. Um, once you're on that website, again, it's just imgur.com. I'll drop that in the chat. And then you can just click new post and you can pull in that photo by dragging or dropping or uploading it. And then you can go ahead and add that, download that image and add that over to your Gmail. Um, I'm not too worried about doing that today, so I'm just going to pull in the original one. Um, but when you're in your settings to find where your email signature is, you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom on the main page. Um, and you'll notice some people confuse it with this bottom one that is for a uh, vacation responder. That is not where you want to put your signature. You're actually going to come up a little bit and find this one here. And you'll see that I don't have any signatures set up right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and create new, and I'm just gonna label this 12, oops, 12, 7, 23, and I'm gonna hit create. 
Now, once I have that created, I can go ahead and pull in my image by clicking this little insert image button. It kind of looks like a picture with mountains. Um, when I click that, it's going to take me to my drive or I can just go to upload. Select my image. And now that I have it in there, I can readjust the size if I want to. So if I click on that, you'll notice that I have options for small. That's obviously way too little. Uh, medium, large, or original size. This is also something that's up to you um, on how you want it to appear in your email. So I'm going to check out large and I'm going to see what it looks like because it's kind of hard to tell from here. So I'm going to go ahead and see what that looks like before I leave it. Um, but one thing you want to remember here is to turn it on. So the defaults, you do have to adjust those if you wanted to pull up when you start a new email. So um, you're gonna click the little drop down, And if you had multiple signatures, you would pick the one that you want. Now there's two different options. One is for new emails. So if I'm starting a brand new email to send out, or if I only want that signature to pull up on reply slash forward um, emails or if I want it to pull up on both. Um, once I have that set up how I want it, you do want to make sure you hit this save option down here. It will bring you back to your email and then you can go ahead and compose a new email to see the size of that. Now, if I were sending this email, it's kind of hard to read. So I think I'm gonna go back and adjust that. So hitting the gear and going to see all settings. Scrolling down, uh, to adjust the size, you click on the image and it will pull these up. I'm going to go back to original size and save again and compose. Now it is pretty big, but that's okay. Um, this is up to you though, how big you want it. You can also resize it in another platform and put it in here. Um, if you don't like any of the sizes that are available, that is always an option as well. All right, let's go back. Um, I'm just gonna take a peek at the chat. Um, we're not gonna cover the Outlook side today during class, um, but if you email us at our support email, someone from our support team would be happy to provide you the resources to go over that. I will drop that email in the chat. so that you can email us, we'd be happy to help you. Um, unfortunately, through command, there is no way to make any of the information clickable. Um, but if you email us that as well, we can see if we can help you get that accomplished. There are some ways to do that. It's just not through command. So feel free to email us. All right, um, moving right along, we're going to go ahead and hit done and we're gonna move over to a social post. As you can see, it brought me back to my designs. Um, once I'm here, I'm just gonna hit that create design again. And for this one, again, we're gonna go ahead and stick with the social. The reason it gives you those options, there are different um, templates within certain thing, certain uh, types of projects. So some of them in email obviously are not available in the other two or some in print are not available. Um, so it's just kind of whatever you're creating that for, you wanna select. Um, once we're in here though, um, I wanna take a look at creating maybe a holiday graphic with you guys today since it is that time of the year. Um, so we are going to take a look at holiday. Let me change this a little. I'm just gonna close some of these drop downs because there's a lot of them. Um, for holiday ones, they have a whole folder of templates for holiday only. So what's great is you can come here and then you can check for the month that you want. Um, let's say all of the major holidays you want to go ahead and create a graphic for, um, get them scheduled for the entire year. That's totally something you could come do because there are past graphics. Um, they do create new ones generally each year. Um, so you can always wait but the old ones are still going to remain in here. So if we go all the way down, you'll notice some of the original ones when command uh, started are still in here for you to access. 
Um, but these are all of their holiday designs and graphics. They're pretty simple and easy to use for everyone. Um, they do have all of the different holidays, whether you're doing winter solstice, um, Hanukkah, whatever you want to post for. Um, we'll just take a look at this winter one. Um, as you can see up in the top, when I'm looking at the designs, it's also giving me the option for different sizes. So there are social stories, which are going to be the long ones, uh, standard postcards, if you wanna create a postcard to send out. There are square images and there are social wide images. Now I tend to steer towards the social square because it can be used on the most uh, different platforms. Um, you can use it on Instagram and coming in, or and Facebook um, and all of that. So it is the most used for me. Um, when we're ready to go ahead and edit that though, we're just gonna go ahead and hit this use button. And once it loads, again, just wait for that to finish loading. It just creates a lot less errors for you. Uh, but once it's done loading, we can go ahead and start editing it. So these are pretty simple. If you don't want to change a lot, you don't have to. Um, if I click on the logo, it's going to automatically pull me into the logo. So I can go ahead and switch that out. Um, we're going to pull in the Austin one. And again, you don't have to use the all white one. You could switch that to be the red and white one or the gray and white one. Whatever you think looks best. I kind of like the red and white one. It gives it a little bit of a pop. Um, I can edit the text here if I wanted to say something different or wanted to add something to it. I can also add my photo. Um, one thing I like to point out up top is I can draw, use shapes, frames, or add additional text. Um, Sometimes my frames work, sometimes they don't, but I'm gonna try it today. Um, frames will give you a frame for a photo. So um, like we kind of did on the signature before, when I pulled the photo in, it put it back into that perfect little square. These should do the same thing. Every once in a while I have some trouble with them. So let's say I wanted to add my logo and my contact information to this. Um, it doesn't have to be this size. You guys can do it whatever you want, or you don't have to do it at all. Um, if I want to put this image into that, though, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. If I uh, select it and then drag and drop this photo, for whatever reason, this doesn't work lately. It should put that into that perfect little circle. Let's try a different shape and see if it works. Well, it's just not working for me today. There we go. So they've changed a little bit. The drag and drop's not working, but the replace image is. So um, to show you guys how I did that again, we'll just go back and see now I got click happy. This is why we don't get click happy because it freezes up on us sometimes. I'm gonna go ahead and reload guys. Bear with me one minute. I'm gonna check these chats. Um, we will, I will show you where to find the templates, um, here in a minute. Um, the social post, this can be, uh, different for every office. So I would definitely make sure you check with your local compliance to see what you're required to have. Um, I do recommend always having the logo and the disclaimer, but again, uh, check with your local compliance to make sure, uh, And okay, um, we'll go back to editing this. So I'm just gonna swap that logo again. And then to find the frames, I just click off of the image. So I was clicked on it and you see it's not up there, but when I click off of everything, I have the drawing shapes, frames and text option at the top. So if I click the frames option, it will then let me select those. And I'm gonna try this this way to see if it works. Um, I was clicking from the logo, so that was my mistake. Let's try from the images. So when I'm clicked on that frame and I'm under images, if I click my assets and do the replace image, that one looks blurry. If I do replace image, there we go, it worked. Yay. 
um, it puts that image perfectly into that square. So this is a great way to plug in your uh, your headshot into something more than just a square. Um, if you have a team of people, you could kind of make it cute and put each of you on the snowflake. Again, we're not going to do that. I'm just throwing out ideas. Um, but I do like to have my my logo or my image on there. And then I can also plug in my uh, information. So I could pull up my name, my email, um, phone number, and then I just need to adjust those. So I've plugged all of them in, drag them over where I want them. And again, you can totally adjust this however you want. If you don't like how something is showing up, fix the wrong box, you can change it. If I don't like the font, the text, things like that, you can change any of that. So again, this is just an idea for you to create something um, if you wanna post it uh, for the holidays. There's also the Christmas ones, the Hanukkah, all of that that you can uh, put up there. You can also move the snowflakes around if you want this to come up higher so you can put all of this information down below. Um, I can do that as well. And then for the text, if I want it to be on the right side instead, and switch that. Let's do something else. The way I wanted it to do it because it's all separate text boxes. Um, but yeah, you can put your website, your app link, all of that stuff you can include. Once you're done and you have this the way that you want it, whatever uh, holiday graphic you want to post, you can go and hit ahead and hit that download option. And for this, again, you want to use the PNG or JPEG. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the PNG. All of, if you want your information, like my name and uh, email and phone number and stuff to pull up to where I don't have to type it every time, you do want to go ahead and add those in your assets. But then once they're added the first time, they will be in your assets for any design that you create thereafter. Um, once I've got that done and downloaded, I can go ahead and hit this done option. And we're just going to pull that into a, a social post. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, go over to campaigns. Let's say we just want to post this on our Instagram and Facebook. I can go ahead and head over to social posts and I can do create. Um, and we're just going to do social posts. Now, um, the difference between social posts and paid ads, social posts is only going to be um, seen by people that follow your accounts. Um, whereas a paid for ad is a way to hopefully capture new leads, people you don't know, and you're paying for that. Um, so we're going to check out social posts. Um, you could see it's giving me the option to select whatever page I want. If I want to post to multiples, um, I can do that. I can go ahead and add my text or my photo. I can pull it in from designs or I've downloaded it. Every once in a while lately, I feel like this is not working. See, it's not pulling it up. That's okay, though. We'll just pull it um, from the computer because I did download it. It's going to allow me to size that if I want to make it zoomed in or whatever. And then once I have it how I want it, I go ahead and hit crop. As you can see over here on the right, it is giving me a preview of what that's going to look like when I have it posted. Um, I don't know if this one will show it. Yes, it does. So I can see it on both platforms. Again, that's the reason I went with the square image because it's easily easy to use for both platforms. Um, whereas the like rectangle or the long one may not sit right. Um, when I was cropping it, I would have maybe had to crop off some information. So that's the reason I go with the square. I don't have the ownership statement anywhere on here. So I went ahead and hit the include. As you can see down here in the corner is where I kind of want you to look. When I hit that button, it adds that to the bottom of my image. Okay. Um, again, check with your compliance. 
And then here, if I wanted to post right now, uh, I can use publish immediately, or if I want to schedule that out. So as I was saying earlier, if you want to schedule out all of December's holiday posts or any other social posts that you want to create, you can schedule those out for the entire month by coming here and clicking the date and the time and then schedule post. Um, I'm not going to actually post this. I'm going to go ahead and hit save draft and then I'm just going to go ahead and check the chat for questions. As you can see in my social posts, it's telling me my drafts that I have created. And then if I have any live or scheduled posts, it's going to show those here. And I can also create right here. Um, and no questions in the chat. So we will keep moving unless anybody has one that they didn't toss out. We have a few, uh, we have a little bit of time left and then uh, we can do more questions, but I'm gonna quickly show you guys, um, and I'm in the wrong spot, that's why. Um, we're gonna go back to designs. And one thing I forgot to mention here is that it, on certain devices, you may not see the create design option up here in the right. If you don't see that, it's just based on the type of device you're on, you will most likely have a plus sign it's the same color, but it's gonna have a plus sign down here in the bottom right corner. And that will allow you to create new, the same as this button here. So we're just gonna go ahead and take a look at video. Now for video, these are, you can't customize these a ton. Um, they're based on neighborhoods. So I'm just gonna start typing and we're just gonna pick one. Um, so you'll find the neighborhood that you want to create a video for, and then you'll hit next. You can enter the name. It's going to pull a lot of this information for you, um, but you can kind of customize it. Um, I'm just going to select one, but you can pick as many as you want. Bloggers. Okay, um, so you get to kind of help fill this out. Again, it should pull the information for you. Um, your agent information, you can pull that in. Put in office phone number. Um, brokerage information, all of that stuff is going to be added. And then if we go ahead and hit next, it's going to create a short little video that we can use for social posts as well. Um, Hopefully they'll have some more customization or options for creating videos. Um, but right now this is basically the only video you can create in here. Um, and now we can take a look at it. So I can go ahead and play it. Um, and it's just gonna go through that information that was plugged in. So we'll just give it a minute to play. I'm not sure if you can hear, hear the music to it. I'm not sure if my sound set up correctly, but there is some music playing along with it if you can't hear it. All right. So that's a cute little video that you create. Um, you go ahead and hit save, and then you can do the same thing with that. You can use that for a social post um, and include that um, for the various neighborhoods around you or one that you're trying to market to, um, and you can use that video. Again, not super customizable. There's not a lot you can do with it, but it is a cute little video you can use um, every once in a while. Does anyone have any questions? Um, we've kind of gone through all of the content I wanted to go through. So if there are questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. If not, and you've gotten everything you want out of today's class, feel free to go ahead and jump off. Um, the recording will be available within 24 hours on our YouTube. Again, I'll drop that link.
for our YouTube in the chat as well as our support email. If you're running into any issues at all or need support or guidance on something, you can reach out to us. We are happy to help. All right, we're going to go back to one of the questions. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. Um, again, if you guys have questions, drop them in the chat. If you don't, feel free to jump off. And thank you for joining us today.